Hey there, Vince here, and welcome to another Circuit Rewind Quick Bug Report. And today what I have for you, cables, lots and lots and lots of cables. So I want to talk about uh, USB cables real quick and uh, how they fail or the, how to tell that they're failing, things like that. Um, the TLDR is that I was turned on to this device here. It is a USB cable tester. Now, to be 100% clear, this is a very, very basic generic cable tester. It's not going to tell you how good the quality of a cable is, so it's not going to test bandwidth or anything like that. It is strictly a very basic generic continuity tester, nothing else. But that alone gives us some really cool insights into what these cables are actually doing. All right, here's a little bit better close-up look at the board itself. Uh, the whole thing's powered by just a CR2032 battery, which gives it the power to run the continuity tests. And to show you how this thing works, uh, there's just a bunch of USB ports around the various sides of this thing. So let's take a cable. We plug it into one side here. And then this is a USB mini cable. So I'm going to plug it into the mini port over here. And straight up, we can see three lights. If I wiggle it around, we sometimes get the D minus, sometimes not. So D plus D minus, those are the, um, those are the pins for data on USB 2. So as you can see, this cable is completely unreliable. That's garbage. All right, let's try another cable now. So this one here, same thing, plug it in the A side, wrap it around, plug it into the uh, USB B port on the opposite end. And it's hard to tell, but the D minus light, again, like it's slightly flickering. Um, like as I move this around, you can see the ground flickering on and off there. And the shielding, so this is a shielded cable, but you can also see the shielding flickering on and off a bunch too. So that, that right there shows why sometimes a cable might work, might not. So you plug it into one machine, it works. You plug it into another one and it doesn't work, right? It depends on like how accurately you get these flaky cables plugged in. So let's take this cable here. Let's try just another random cable. This is another A to, to mini. Let's plug this in. Come on, cooperate with me cable. So it is a ground or it is a shielded cable. But if we notice, um, we only get three of the four lights here lighting up. And even then ground is only sometimes lighting up. So if you need data but no power, well, that's not really gonna work. <laughs> that garbage. All right, so here's another A cable. This one is a micro USB cable now. And so micro actually has two different ports on this that we can test from. This one over here is dedicated to just micro. And we have power and ground and no data. This is a power only cable. So you plug this into your phone or something like that and you can't transfer your files back and forth. That's, that's lame. Like sure it has power, but to me this is worthless, it's garbage. They have both the 2.0 and the 3.0 variant for this port. So technically we can plug it into this other side, but it's still only gonna test the main four pins and same failure. That's just cool though, if you wanna test a uh, USB 3.0 cable, it will show you the results. So here is another uh, USB mini cable, plug this one in. And you may be able to see the VBUS, so the power is flickering on and off a bunch, no data and ground, eh, ground works, but if you can't even have a stable power connection, it's not even useful as a charging cable. So what do good cables look like? In my last video, I showed that I just bought a Google Pixel 8a and those come with brand new cables. So this is a brand new C to C cable that came with a phone and has not been used other than for simple little testing like this. I didn't even use it as a transfer cable from one phone to the other. It's not touched a PC yet. It's only touched this device in testing before the video. So this has a USB-C port on one side and conveniently a USB-C port on the other. So plug that in. First off, before I even get the cable in there, you can see that the, uh, the shield is active on this cable. Plug it in and tons of lights light up on this. So you can see D plus D minus, so it'll do USB 2. And uh, you'll also see like the proper power is all lit up as well. So if I unplug this, because it is a C cable and to put it upside down, you'll notice the D plus D minus actually shifted which side it's on. So instead of using like the top row of pins, it's now using the bottom row of pins since USB-C is fully reversible. 
Since I'm prepping for some international travel right now, I wanted to get some brand new cables because the charging cable that came with my framework laptop is kind of shredded and in pieces now. It's been beat to hell and back. So I bought some brand new USB 3 cables that are rated for 100 watts, I think 100 watts anyway, and for either 10 or 20 gigabits. So they have basically everything wired up in it. So let's plug this in on one side. Now let's go to the other side and plug this in just like what we're doing before. Immediately, uh, before I get it in, you can see that the shield lights up. And look at that. Everything is lit up except for the D plus D minus, which that's how it's supposed to be in this particular configuration. D plus D minus, you only get it on one side or the other, not both at the same time. But every other pin is perfectly lit up, so every wire in this is uh, available for high-speed data transfer or for power delivery or both at the same time. If I take this out, reverse it, just like before, D plus D minus is now on the other side because we inverted the way the cable's plugged in. I have a lightning cable here for charging my iPhone that I have. Yes, I have more than one phone in my possession. Uh, I'm not loyal to any brand. I'm loyal to all brands simultaneously. So I'm going to plug in the A there and then the lightning down here. And the reason I want to do this one specifically is you can see that this one is a little bit wonky with what lights up with it. So like as it's inserting, you can see like the V bus lights up and as it goes further in, the V bus is no longer connected but the ground is. We get one of the two data but not both on one side and then like you can see how it's kind of shifting on and off as I wiggle it back and forth. So one other thing to consider with these is that even though this is testing a cable, this is still a cheap piece of electronics, right? Um, it doesn't even have a pretty case to go around it. So something that considers that some of these connectors themselves may not be perfect, and you have to be cognitive to that when you're testing this. So this is not perfect reference. What I found is that this specific lightning port on this thing is kind of shoddy, and uh, that's always a possibility with these that they might be using, and they probably are using cheap connectors for all of these. Um, so that's just something to be aware of is to not just throw out the very first cable if the cable says it's bad. Test with a few good known cables and see how they respond on this and then go through and evaluate which ports on here are working, which ones aren't, and where they work at. So like with this one, it's really hard to test lightning just because it doesn't want to give a good uh, consistent connection on it. So one other cool thing with this board is that it lists all the USB pinouts on the bottom on the silk screen. So it shows like a type, um, it shows a USB Type C connector here with all the different pins, uh, wired for 3.0. But again, like I said, 2.0 would just be D plus D minus ground and VCC, um, and then some of the other connectors over here. And uh, so yeah, that's basically all I wanted to show you is that you can go pick up one of these boards for cheap and use it to. Uh, start testing your USB cables, assuming that the board itself is actually doing its job properly, which, as you can tell from this one, is sometimes. In my particular case, I've tested USB 2 and 3 on every single connector on this, except for Lightning, since it's not USB 3. And the Lightning port on mine is the only one that's flaky. The rest of these have all been working pretty much perfectly for me. Anyway, that's all I got for today. Um, until next time, take care, all.